Hey guys, Mike here, and in this video we're going to be going over painting a rifle, uh, specifically a Remington 700. Different rifles require different um, little peculiarities in painting them, but in this, this video is going to be going over a Remington 700 more specifically. Um, this is my rifle, you've seen it before. Uh, if you've been following Facebook, you've been uh, seeing pictures of it going through different stages as it was getting uh, rebuilt and customized by a um, marine gunsmith. Uh, work I've had done on it, new barrel, uh, this is a Schneider 24-inch uh, barrel, recessed crown, just like an uh, M48-3 rifle would have, detachable bottom metal for a um, magazine-fed gun, it had a maximized recoil lug put in, it's about twice the thickness of the original, and the uh, gunsmith made this recoil lug himself. I had him re-thread the action, true it up, true everything inside, and give it a nice uh, tight chamber. So the chamber is uh, three thousandths past the minimum, and I had the throat pushed out to be about the average for M118LR, so that the ogives would barely make contact inside the throat. So it's been a pretty accurate gun. It's been sub minute of angle easily for um, five round groups, half minute of angle, and out to 20 round groups, a 20 round string of fire, it'll, it'll fire within one minute of angle. And uh, that was tested at 300 yards in a test shed on their on a vice. So, um, really nice rifle. Um, it's not completely finished yet. I've had a lot of things changed on this gun since I've got it, but um, the last, very last things that I want to have done is get a correct M40 uh, A3 stock, which would be the McMillan A4 stock. Um, that would have a square end and the uh, saddle cheek piece in the back. Obviously it would be left handed. And then I'm going to get the action clip slotted for a Badger Ordnance uh, M40 A5 mount for the scope mount. And then that would be it. That would be the last things that get done to this gun. Um, but for now I'm going to keep it like this so I can use it to compete with and just to shoot for fun. Um, if the gun's good enough, I want I might use it for like an NRA match gun, uh, any 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 sight any rifle type match, and um, maybe even FTR. Uh, we'll see how it does, and um, even if it's not as competitive as some of the other guns, I'd just like to sh like to try it out anyway for that. So um, going over painting it, I'll take you close up and see everything that I taped up. We taped up our sunshade here. Uh, with this new thick barrel on it, it will not fit the actual lens cap. Uh, the Premier Reticle rifles and some other scope that use a Tenebrex lens cap have a really thick lens cap. So the front one won't fit, won't fit on, but I'll use my sunshade instead and my bolt. Um, things you need to do, and I didn't want to go over the prep of this because it took me a few hours to uh, remove all the paint or remove as much of the paint from the scope that I could but pretty much I take nail polish remover or something with acetone in it you put it in a jar and you take cleaning patches for your rifle and you soak them in that jar of acetone and you can just start rubbing the paint off um, put a coat of the acetone over the paint leave it there for a while and it'll start rubbing off right away other than that after you degrease the entire gun uh, completely um, wipe it down you tape it up. I'll go over the parts that the tape up more closely. And then we got our paint, got the masking tape, and I got this rubber sheet here so that we can paint on this table without uh, ruining the table. Um, so let's get the close up. Okay, so for the close up here, knobs and their indicator marks taped up. Also, where I have the screws here to float the turrets also cover those up All right. the simrad mount any any mounting surfaces I like to keep uh, just this straight up metal I like bare metal on metal when I when I have a mounting surface I don't want paint to get in between the mounting surfaces when I'm sliding something on and off of it magnification ring all right, it has the markers on it, and this magnification ring has a little bit of rubber on it. I don't want paint on it because eventually it's just going to crack and come off anyway. The lenses, I stuff with toilet paper. 
Uh, I pack as much toilet paper as I can in there, and I put tape over it. Uh, this lens also has this little sticker here for uh, drop and drift. I'm just going to keep this closed while I'm while I'm painting it. Front also stuffed with toilet paper, covered with masking tape. Now for the Remington 700, you have this little port here, just in case you have excessive pressure, so I have that taped up. Uh, you don't want paint to get in there because it gets in the action, it can create a little layer of thickness and that can cause uneven pressure when the gun's firing. Uh, mostly just an accuracy issue. Action. Alright. Safety. Trigger. And at the buttstock, this is a big rubber pad. Uh, you could paint it, but the paint's eventually just going to fall off and crack as the rubber compresses. Bolt, pretty much the only thing here is going to be the bolt handle that's going to get a little paint. The bolt handle gets a lot of use because you're, you're using it to run the gun, so the bluing will start to come off. Everything on the firing pin, but the, just the shroud here is going to get painted. And then the uh, Tenebrex uh, kill flash. And to get some of these little smaller parts, I just use a razor blade. So we'll go into painting. Alright, one last thing I forgot to mention was this little free-floating groove here. All right, I don't want paint to get built up in there, so I just take a piece of like printer paper, fold it in half, and slide it down in there so I can still paint the stock down here and paint most of the barrel. If you want the entire barrel painted, you're going to have to take it out of the action. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm not too worried about it right now. The gun was re-blued when um, I had my guy work on it, so unless, as long as nothing gets scratched in, down in there, um, the bling will stay on. For the muzzle, I'll just take a foamy earplug, uh, roll it up till it gets nice and thin, and stick it in the muzzle, and it'll expand on its own and uh, cover up your crown so you don't get any paint on your crown or your bore. My first coat is going to be tan. I'm going to cover the entire gun in tan. I'm not going to record the entire thing, but just keep the spray can about 12 inches, 8 to 12 inches away from the rifle. And if you pass this all the way across the rifle, you don't want to stop uh, and continue spraying and then turn back because then you're going to have thickness at the ends. So here it goes. Alright, so now my base coat's dry, I'm going to take dark, br darker brown, and I'm going to put stripes on the parts that stick out. So when you're camouflaging something, um, in order to try to break up that 3D, um, the features on it, something that are recognizable, so when someone sees a rifle they recognize certain features. You want to darken up the areas that stick out or highlight, and you want to lighten up the areas that are more shallow. Try to, that, we're trying to blend it together. So things like the, uh, the turrets, the ends of the scope, the muzzle, things like that that stick out, we're going to put stripes on those first.
So once this dries, I'm going to grab it, flip it over, finish the stripes on the bottom, and then go on into our pattern. Alright, so now that the green... Alright, so now that the brown stripes have dried up, I'm going to put a little bit of green over it all, kind of shade it up. Alright, so now that I got my primary layer down, green stripes, brown stripes, with a coat of tan, I'll lay on vegetation. Alright, so this is the outcome. Um, once it's completely dry, I'll start peeling off the paint, and then I'll take some more close-up pictures once it's all assembled. Put them at the end of this video. So, um, key things with painting guns. Uh, always degrease them, clean them, use uh, rubbing alcohols, soak some cleaning patches in it and just rub, it, rub everything down. Uh, make sure it's dust free, there's no dirt if you're doing it outside, make sure nothing blows on it. Tape up everything, uh, lenses, stuff with toilet paper and then tape it. Tape up all your indicator marks on your scopes, any surfaces you don't want paint on, uh, metal surfaces where other things will attach. Earplug in the muzzle. Free floating barrels, you don't want paint to get down there either, it'll start to build up. Um, that's pretty much it. The pattern is really up to your imagination. Uh, this pattern is not too hard. Light color all the way across, dark colors in the um, areas that stick out the most. And then after you do that, just put some vegetation on, and whichever color the vegetation lands on, use the up opposite two colors and paint it up. So. Later on, I might be doing some other guns, but that'll be uh, some time from now. So, thanks for watching.